Hello and welcome to the first lesson of the YRA Zero to Hero course. And in this lesson we're going to be focusing mainly on understanding the basics of Forex trading. So let's get right to it. The first thing you need to understand is what is a Forex pair? And a Forex pair is basically two different currencies against each other. Like Great British Pound US Dollar and the first currency is called the base currency and the second one is the quote currency and when you're looking in the chart and it shows you the price that's basically telling you how much of the quote currency is needed to buy the base currency so there are two types of pairs there's a major there's the major pairs and the minor pairs the major pairs are any pairs which have USD in it like Euro USD Australian dollar USD and USD with the Japanese yen and minor pairs are just the opposite there are any pairs which don't have USD in it like Euro JPY Pound Euro and CAD JPY so let me go into the chart and actually show you what I'm talking about as you see here we're in USD JPY right and this is my red list these are all of the forex pairs that I personally choose to trade so in USD JPY, we can see the price is currently at 148.136. And what that means is we need 148.136 Japanese yen to buy one US dollar. That is the price. So let's go to Euro USD. And it's 1.08531 is the price as you can see. So that means we need 1.08531 euro uh, dollars to buy one euro, and as of course the price fluctuates up and down, and that is how as forex traders we make our money. We bet whether price is going to go up or go down, and obviously there has to be some sort of point system to find out how much you're actually winning and how much you're actually losing and that's what are uh, that's what is a pip a pip stands for point in percentage and imagine it's like a point right and it goes both up and down it's like a point what i mean by it's like a point imagine it like as a goal scored in football if if you have a long position and the long position means that you are betting that price is going to trade higher than where it is right now so you want the market to go higher right and let's say the market went higher by 20 pips so by 20 points that means you are 20 points in profit because you have correctly guessed the way which price is going to go and obviously in the other case if the market trades lower by 20 pips that would mean you are minus 20 pips in profit so the position so the long position that you opened is in drawdown and you are currently losing money and while a short position you're betting that price is going to trade lower than where it is right now so you want price to, to trade lower you're expecting that price is currently overbought and you want to see lower prices so you'd open a short position right so if then the market moved down by 20 pips what would that mean that means you are 20 pips in profit because the market moved where you expected it to move and it moved by how much by 20 pips so that means you are 20 points in profit and then of course if the market goes the other way you're in a short position and market trades higher by 20 pips then you are obviously minus 20 pips in profit as you wanted as you expected price to go down so you open a short position but instead price didn't go down it went up 20 pips so obviously you would incur some type of loss and again let's go on the chart so you can actually visu visually see what I'm talking about when I mean by what I, what, I, what I mean by pips and long and shorts. So this is a daily time frame. You will learn more about the time frames later on. But just for now, each candle is one whole day of data, one whole 24 hours, right? And this is how the pips are calculated. You will press here to measure. And so let's say you went long here, and you see that number up there, the 55 this is 55 pips 55 plus pips from here to here market went up and then let's say the market went down the other way and here would be minus 55 pips so market went down 
by 55 pips. And 55 is just a random number I chose. It can be anything. This is 185, 886 pips. And this is also, let's find it for you, 186.8 pips. So let's say over here we decided to, we decided that okay, price went down for a bit, but I expect it to go back up again. So here is where I would open a long position. And a long position basically means you expect price to trade higher. You keep your stop, and this is your protective stop. That means if price comes down to this level here, your position would close with whatever loss that you are in. So let's see how many, how big is our stop loss. Stop loss is 107 pips. And this is pretty big as we're doing it on a daily time frame. So if the market trades past on 106 pips, let's say it trades over here to 114 pips, we will we have we will be taken out of our position and we will be liquidated but luckily for us let's say we went we went long we would have caught 355.9 pips so we rounded it up to 356 pips and that's the importance of the pips is that you actually see how much you're winning and how much you're losing it gives you some kind of indication on how good you're doing or how bad you're doing and let's go back so understanding positions when when you're opening either a short or a long position you get to choose something called your lot, lot size and what this means is how this is the strength you want your position to be so let's say you use a 0 0.10 lot size in this example and that means per 10 pips that the market moves you will gain slash lose around 10 pounds but if you use a one lot size, you're risking a hundred pounds per 10 pips. So you see a big difference in the lot size. And then before you open a position, you need to set a stop loss. And I mentioned this a couple of minutes earlier. And this is the price where if the chart trades to that price, the trade would close and that is the max amount you can lose in that trade. So basically every time you open a position, it is imperative that you have a stop loss set. You have a, s a sort of number in your head that you're okay with losing now let's say okay in this trade I want to risk only $50 so then in your stop loss the max you should lose is $50 that way you know that the rest of your capital is protected and safe right the next thing is a take profit so and then when price reaches your desired level you would take profit and that's when you close the position and you secure the money that you have gained into your account you can't gain no more you can't gain no less you have taken the money out of the trade and safely secured it into your account so let me explain the importance of the lot size let's go down to the one hour just to make it a bit more simple all right let me find you a good example okay and let's say over here at this point right here at the top of this you would decide to go short and you would keep your stop loss over here at the top so we're risking 20.5 pips let me put this here for you so you can visually see what exactly what I'm talking about as we said we want to risk 20.5 pips right 20.4 I right, 20.4 let's say and no keep it here at the top 20.4 and our target let's say somewhere here okay so now we're risking 20 pips right so let's say in this trade you would want to risk $60 so if you want to risk $60 in this trade you would use a 0 0.20 lot no sorry excuse me you would lose a 0 0.30 lot size And the reason you would choose a 0 0.30 lot size is because each in the 0 0.30 lot, each 10 pips the market move, that's $30 or pounds from your account. And you're risking 20 pips, right? And if the and if you're risking 30 pounds per 10 pips, and you risk 
and no nah, man sorry excuse me what I meant to say is if we are risking if you are using a 0 0.30 lot size and want to risk 60 pounds that means the max amount of pips our stop loss can be is 20 because as you know 0 0.30 lot size equals $30 per account but let's say instead of want to risk instead of risking 30 we only want to risk 40 so that would be a 0 0.20 lot size as each as each 10 pips in a 0 0.20 lot is 20 pounds so if you're risking 20 pips in total and it's 0 and it's 20 pounds per 10 pips 20 pips will equal 40 pounds and this goes also in the other way so as you can see here the market moved 65.7 pips in our direction let's just make it simple and let's say the market moves 60 pips and we close our position so if the market moves 60 pips and we're using a 0 0.20 lot size what that would mean is per 10 pips is equal to is equal to 20 pounds and that's all using a 0 0.20 lot size don't forget 10 pips is equal to 20 pounds using a 0 0.2 lot size all right and the market moved 60 pips market moved 60 pips let me make this a bit wider and market moved 60 pips in our favor right so what that means is it's going to be 20 times 6 because 10 pips is equal to 20 pounds and market moved 60 pips so we remove this 0 and this 0 so it's just 20 times 6 and 20 times 6 is equal to 120 pounds so the total risk the total risk was only 40 pounds but the profit was 120 pounds that is a risk to reward ratio ratio of 3 to 1 because we only risk 40 pounds but we gained 120 so that's three times how much we risk that's why it's a 3 to 1 ratio so let's see what's next where do we open positions and the thing about this question is it's really up to you the first thing you need to start trading is a broker all right and imagine a broker acting like a bank imagine it's like Santander or HSBC and what do you do on those banks you give them your money right so in a broker you would deposit that you would deposit the amount you want to open your trading account with let's say you want to deposit ten thousand dollars into a broker so you sign up to a broker right you deposit the money and now you have ten thousand dollars in that broker in that bank let's say and then from that bank you open accounts from you know how a bank opens accounts you can open a credit account or a debit account and different types of debit account same with a broker you can open different types of trading accounts with that ten thousand dollars initially but let's say you want to put all of our eggs in one basket we want that ten thousand dollars into one trading account right so then you would take that ten thousand dollars in the broker and then transfer it into your trading account and that's actually where you can open the positions and each broker will use a different type of trading services more, more popularly they can use metatrader 4 or metatrader 5 or a new one is called trade locker that's actually where i trade and th that's it basically you deposit the money into the broker then with a total deposit you can open your your account size you can open your you can op you can open your trading account and you choose what size it is all right next thing is risk management and now let me tell you if you have not been paying attention now is the time to pay attention to this because risk management is one of the most important important things needed to actually 
be a successful trader and not lose all of your money like all of the, the statistics because as you know 97 percent of people fail at trading they don't make money they lose so it's very hard to be good but with, with me here i'm going to help you and push you with everything that i know to try to make you as profitable as you can i'm gonna give you the the keys no so, sorry excuse me i'm gonna give you the plan but you have to put in the work because i can't put in the work for you but i can teach you with my experience and what i know on how to become profitable okay so as i already said it is one of the most important factors in all of trading right so if you have bad risk risk management it's very hard to be a successful trader because in one day in two days you can lose what you were working for for the past two years and trust me many people are like this many people have no idea of risk management or just simply don't care enough and can blow their account in a matter of bro in a matter of a couple trades they can lose everything they worked for and that is not what we want we want this to be structured we want it we want we need to be patient and we need we need to follow a set of rules to see this ag account grow consistently and easily okay so a good risk risk of measure would be that you're risking anywhere between one to three percent of your account per trade right so this means you have at least 33 wrong trades in a row to blow your account and when you see the 33 wrong trades in a row you're gonna you're gonna think to yourself what there's no way there's no way i can risk 33 trades and that's good you need to think like that because you need to be on the safer side of protecting your capital because that is so important as a trader all you have is your capital if you lose your capital you can't trade so what's the point of risking more than you are comfortable with risking more than you than, than you can afford a good uh, a good measure when you first start to trade is to risk between one to two percent of your account or even less than that if you're if you're comfortable me personally i risk 1.5 percent per trade but that doesn't mean you have to do what i do you do what you find comfortable with doing and three percent is a bit aggressive if i'm being honest it's a bit much in a trade right and you're th probably thinking to yourself if i'm only risking one percent or two percent of my account then how am i ever going to make money and that's where you're wrong the secret to making money is not by taking a lot of high high risking trades and gaining a lot no because okay let's say let's just say this let's say one, one time you risk 15 percent of your account and you get a return of 40% and the next day you do it again and then you do it again and you do it again you have four successful trades creating you such a large sum of money in your account but then one day you lose and you're like hmm I lost but I was right the four other times so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right right now and then you're going again but you risk more than you lost because like okay so you're going to be thinking in your head I lost this much so for me to make that to make that back and get some profit what should I do should increase my lot size and risk more so I can gain more and then my friends that's where you fall down a very deep and bad rabbit hole trust me when you when you go down when you when you start thinking like that you the money just disappears it disappears in seconds from your accounts and you're like wow what did I just do so that's why you should be extremely selective with the trades you take and not just you know hope for the best see what happens you really need to be as sure as you can about the trade before taking it right and then this is the thing this is the thing right here the trades you take should be offering you a nice return they shouldn't just offer you whatever you risk at least a two to one to a three to one risk to reward ratio and so what that means if you're risking 30 pounds per trade and you get a two to one that means you risk 30 pounds but you gain 60 in profit or at 3 to 1 you risk 30 and you gain 90 or whatever let's say you're risking 100 you gain 300 you gain 200 that's what that means and if you're selective with your trades and you're just catching these good trades a good 2 to 1 3 to 1 and even when you get better at this it'll be 4 to 1 5 to 1 trades and that's where your account grows when you're taking one or two trades in a week with a good return of risk that's when you will see the real growth just think of it if you're risking two percent per trade and you get whatever you get four to six percent of your account let's say five percent to keep it to keep it nice and simple you risk two percent in a trade you gain five percent 
and then how many trades how many successful trades do you need to get a quarter of of your account back you just need five successful trades you already have 25 percent of your money so what i mean by this let's say you have a five thousand dollar account and you want to risk two percent so risking two percent of your trade is how much of a five thousand dollar account it's a hundred dollars per trade it might seem like a lot and it is a lot of money but you have five thousand dollars initially so a hundred to five thousand doesn't seem that that much of a big difference am i right okay so you're risking how much did we say two percent risking a hundred a hundred dollars per trade and you want to and let's say we make an average of a five percent return of, of that risk so you're risking one hundred dollars and you're getting a five percent back so what is that risking a hundred dollars per trade and you get it back so that's around 250 per trade if i'm not mistaken so and you have a five thousand dollar account and 25% of $5,000 would be 1,500, 1, if I'm not mistaken. No, a bit less. 1,300 ish. 1,330. That's how much 5% would be. And if you're risking and if you're gaining 5% back on each trade, it will only take you 5 trades to get to 25% of your account. So you have $5,000 and you get 5 successful trades in a row, congratulations. You have just boosted your account by 25% and that is insane. That is insane. That is a very good return of a very good return to your account. And remember, your risk management is what you are comfortable in losing. Never be in a position where you are risking an amount that makes you feel uncomfortable. So don't let anyone tell you, let's say your friend, your best friend in the world, is risking 6% in a trade because you yeah this is the way to do it but you feel like no this is too much I should risk lower then you risk lower don't listen to the outside noise always do what you feel comfortable in doing okay and now these are the candlesticks so as you see the basically in a chart it's a bunch of candlesticks right and the wicks on the candle represent that during the time frame for the candle price traded to that level and then came back to the close or to the open so this is a called an up close candle as you can see it's green which means the price traded higher right so the price opened here as you can see then some then sometime during the time frame let's say it's a daily candle so this candle represents one whole day of data right so price opened here then in the beginning of the day price traded lower to this point before trading all the way up here before coming down and closing the day here and then again same for the down close candle it's called the down close candle as it's bearish which means price is going down so price opened here for the day beginning of the day 12 a.m. price opened here we seen price trade higher and then price came all the way back down to this point right here exactly then from here price went back up and price ended at this day so that's why it's called the close let me go on the chart and actually show you the importance of it let me clear all of this on the chart as we said it's a daily candle and we will look at this example right here this candle this black up close candle right so the opening is here at this red line but let's change the red to black okay and the close is right here let's change this to the red okay and this is the wick let me just highlight it so it's a bit easier to see and s oof sorry sorry about that guys and same thing here minimize it a bit and make it fit exactly okay so now these are the wicks called out remember this is a daily time frame so this one candle is 24 hours of data so price opened that opened at this level and during the day typically in the beginning price traded all the way down 32 pips before 
coming all the way back up to this point here 72 pips so from the low to the high it was a 72 pip difference then once price reached the high of the day traded back down into here the close 30 pips and this is the importance of the time frame as right now on the daily it's just a wick as you can see if you drop down to the four hour oh what do we see the wick became candles and the same thing is gonna happen here so this is what I mean Let's see, where's the opening price yeah price opened somewhere here traded all the way lower here traded all the way down and that's just the wick because it traded down and then came all the way back up before price closed and price closed here so it came all the way down to start the day then it traded all the way back up and then from and then the close being somewhere here and as you can see these are also wicks right here and here so let me zoom in on that we go to the one hour you see the wicks that were before in the four hour we drop down the time frame it becomes candles so we can clearly see why price was doing what it was doing okay and now finally we'll talk about time frames and you already heard me mention time frames and it's basically the amount of time it takes from a candle to open to close and the, the exact time that you want to view is up to you you know there's a one minute time frame five minutes fifteen minute ten minute thirty minute hourly four hourly daily weekly monthly even yearly and all of these time frames have different reasons different different reasons of use all right so the smaller time frames tell you more tell you more data about what market is going to do on a short term basis on a short term basis sorry so the 1 minute 5 minute 15 minute and then the intermediate time frames tell you data about what market is going to do on an intermediate basis meaning this to a day to day basis where the hourly the 4 hourly and the daily time frames would be used and then the long term time frames will tell you about what market is going to do on a long term basis and what's considered a long term uh, time uh, on a long term basis sorry what's considered a, lo a long term time frame is a weekly and a monthly and daily is considered as a how can I say this daily is considered as the lower bound of a long term time frame is the lowest level of a long term time frame Okay, and thank you. That's the end of the first lesson.